Hey, welcome to the shop. If you haven't tuned in before, my name's Tim. I'm a welding engineer and I make these videos about welding basics from my hobby shop here in the garage. Now, we're talking all about oxyacetylene today. We're gonna talk about cutting, welding, even a little bit of heating. And we'll go over proper techniques for all of those and a bit of how to, but I'm really gonna focus in on selecting this as a process when compared with other options like a plasma cutter or an arc welding process to see what really makes the most sense for someone, particularly in a uh, hobby shop or on the farm or just here in the garage. Let's start off by looking at the basic parts of a typical oxyacetylene setup. So I have one of the tote torch setups. It's nice and portable, but it does have really small tanks on it. Now the systems are pretty much all the same. On top of the tanks, you'll have a couple of regulators. These control the gas pressure through the hoses and up into the torch body. Now on this torch handle here, you have a couple of valves. One of them controls the flow of acetylene, the other of oxygen. And on the end of it, you can attach a couple different kinds of heads. This is a welding tip here. And welding tips are pretty simple. They mix the oxygen and acetylene, and it comes out a single hole there in the end. And they're available in different sizes that's usually indicated by a stamped number here on the back. Now there's a lot more going on here with the cutting tip. This has several holes. You see there's a circle around the outside for flames to heat and a jet through the center for oxygen to be able to exit. And this helps to make the cut. When you press that valve down, oxygen flows through that back tube and down out through the center jet where that knob controls the flow of oxygen into the flame where it's mixed with acetylene to heat everything in round circular flames around the outside. To light everything, you use what's called a striker. There are these flint style, or there are several different piezoelectric ones. I like this one that's like a barbecue lighter. It was a little bit hard to find when I was searching around before this, but I'll try to put a link in the description. Now, there's just a couple of things for us to talk about before we start making some cuts here. First of all, there's some important things to understand about how an acetylene cylinder works. You see, an acetylene cylinder isn't just an open cavity like you'd have for argon or oxygen or like the propane tank on your barbecue. It actually has a spongy material inside that's soaked full of acetone. Now, the reason for this is because the acetylene dissolves into the acetone and it can only be released so fast. This makes it much safer and more stable to handle the cylinders and to avoid massive explosions in case of an accident that acetylene has to kind of boil out of the acetone in there and that can only happen so fast. So this has a couple implications for us as users. One, acetylene cylinders have to be used in the upright position and in fact they need to be sitting upright for a little bit of time before you actually use them. And two, the amount of acetylene that can come out of a cylinder is limited by the size of the cylinder itself. You see, having a small cylinder like I do doesn't just limit how long the torch can run, it also limits the size of tip that I can use for both cutting, and I can't use a large rosebud heating tip with this because with that small cylinder, it simply can't boil off the acetylene fast enough. Let's just take a look at some of the safety gear that's important to use. Gloves are always a good idea whenever you're dealing with anything hot like this. Always wear some good boots to uh, cover and protect your feet. The sparks and the uh, slag that'll come down off of a cutting torch, that'll go right through your Nikes and maybe your feet too. Also protect your eyes, it's really bright. Now it's not as bright as an arc weld, so typically a shade five like I have in these glasses or goggles, or you could even use a welding hood on cut mode. Well, let me gear up, we'll go ahead and light this torch and make a few cuts. I'll start by turning on the oxygen and I'll slowly crack the valve and then open it all the way to the top. And the acetylene, this one has a wrench, which I don't really care for, but I'll open it just a quarter of a turn and leave the wrench on there so I could turn it off quickly if I needed to in an emergency. Because this is a cutting head, I have two knobs for the flow of oxygen. I'll make sure it's closed on the cutting tip and then open it way up down at the bottom, but no oxygen is gonna flow because the top is closed until I press that valve. Now I can open the acetylene just slightly and then I'll turn it on until the black smoke goes away. See when it's down low, there's a lot of smoke coming off. It goes away, but if I turn it up too high, that flame will jump away from the tip. 
Now I'll start adding some oxygen, and this is where you adjust your flame. See, as I add the oxygen in, there's that long feather that comes, and it'll come down into a circle of pointed flames. That means I have just the right ratio of oxygen to acetylene. Now when I press the button, you can see it still grows. That means I need just a little bit more oxygen. I'll add just a little bit more. And then I should have the right balance when I just barely meet that. And that gives me what's called a neutral flame. If you have more fuel, then it's a carburizing flame. More oxygen is an oxidizing flame, which both have their purposes. But for everything we're doing here today, we're going to go for a neutral flame. Now to make a cut, I'm going to heat my material just a little bit past the tips of the blue flame circle here. And I'll preheat the line where I'm going to cut and then hold it in place till I see it red hot and press the jet of oxygen, that trigger on the back, to start flowing that oxygen out through and make my cut. I'll move gradually along here, just watching it cut. Let's go ahead and do that one more time right next to that. It's hanging on by a little bit of uh, dross there at the bottom. Now once it's heated up, press that jet down and then just move gradually along. This is pretty thin material so I can move fairly quickly and make my cut right there and it comes out pretty good. Now you can use an edge guard like this. I was doing a uh, promotional thing at a welding school and I was working with a guy, uh, Case, and he uh, had one of these straight edges. He's like, oh, I'm using a nervous bar. And I'm like, a nervous bar? He's like, yeah, when you get nervous, you use that to keep you from shaking around. And I think a nervous bar is a pretty good idea for me. I struggle with some of the freehand getting it very straight myself. Now here in my shop, rather than using an acetylene torch for most cuts, I use other tools, especially my plasma cutter. And this is really nice because you don't have to heat it up or adjust it. It doesn't get everything quite as hot. You can just pick it up and go. However, portability and the ability to th cut thick material is just really difficult to beat with an acetylene torch. The plasma cutter does have it beat on materials though. With an acetylene torch, you're gonna be limited to steel, ferrous materials like that where a plasma cutter can cut aluminum. Look at that uh, wobble there. I probably could use a nervous bar uh, once again. Anyway, but uh, for me, plasma cutter is usually the way to go. Nice to have a torch when I need it though. Well, now that we've done a bit of cutting, while we still have the cutting tip on here, I'm gonna show you how to use that to heat up some rod and to bend it. That's what I use for heating material, though there are better heating tips if you have larger tanks. Um, one of them is called a rosebud. It puts out a larger flame. It was one of my dad's favorite tools in his shop. He'd use it all the time. I don't have one and my torch can't support it, but uh, the cutting tip should work pretty good for us today. So I just have some round bar here we can put a bend in, and this is a nice way to make a bend if you're not too worried about uh, affecting some of the mechanical properties. So I'm just gonna adjust the torch once again, the same that I did before, and then start to heat this bar where I want the bend. Now to tell when it's heated up enough, I'm just going to hold a little bit of tension. Now I'm holding the torch just a little bit further away to be able to heat a broader area, than I would if I were trying to cut it. Now I can feel it starting to give, and once I do, I can take the heat off and go ahead and make my bend. And it's really just as simple as that. Honestly, this is probably my most common use for this torch, is just making bends and things like this to be able to form some material. Let's go ahead and change the tip over and do a little bit of welding. I haven't done a lot of gas welding, I've done a little bit, but I usually resort to an arc welding process for better control. But with the gas weld here, you have some great portability and it can be pretty good for some uh, thinner stuff and give some nice control. Here with the welding tip on, I'm gonna adjust the torch. Uh, it's very similar to the way that we did it before. I'm gonna add some acetylene here. I'll go a little bit too far to show you what happens when it jumps away from the tip. Right there, that means there's too much acetylene, so I'll back it off then turn it up till that smoke goes away. Now I'll start adding in the oxygen just like before and once again there's that outer cone or that big feather and that will start to go away and converge into that small point. I'll turn it down and then do it one more time. I want to stop when it just barely gets there because I don't want too much oxygen. Now I'm going to use these gas welding rods and then start by forming a weld puddle 
and get into a little bit of a rhythm where I'll advance the puddle with the torch and then dip a little bit of filler rod as I go. Now I'll stop here so we can get a closer look and despite not having done this for quite a while, it's coming out okay. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can get an idea how I'm moving back and forth and I'll move forward and advance the puddle then move back to control the heat here and the heat's getting away from me a little bit but overall I'm able to progress and form a decent weld bead there. I think it'll stay stuck for a while. Truth be told, I don't really have any need to gas weld anything in my shop. I have MIG welding when I want to move quickly and really produce some stuff and knock it out and I have TIG that I can pick up and make some nice precise work. It's a lot less hassle, a lot less heat, but gas welding is pretty portable. All right, well, thanks a ton for tuning in today. You know, if you learned something or enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting the thumbs up below or leave me a comment down in the comments section. If you are looking to learn welding and fabrication on your own, check out some online courses that I've put together and kept really affordable in the description, and we'll see you next time.